It's you and me now, kid. So let's get back what belongs to us. One family down, one to go. When you think of Gotham City, you might imagine chaos, crime, and a dark night somewhere in the shadows. But what happens when the spotlight shifts to the villains running the show? Can a criminal ever truly make it home when that home is Gotham's blood-soaked underbelly? And more importantly, who's ruthless enough to seize the throne? In the Penguin's fifth episode, Homecoming, we find ourselves in the thick of Gotham's ongoing power struggle, and it's a ride you won't want to miss. But exactly what is this episode setting up? And will the quality remain high going forward? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it would make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. With only a handful of episodes left, as they jockey for control of the city, Tensions are rising between Oz and Sophia Falcone. Er, I'm sorry, Sophia Gigante. Their respective empires are building, but how much blood will be shed before one stands victorious? Spoiler alert, in Gotham, nothing is simple. So who will claim Gotham's metaphorical Iron Throne? After all, when you play the Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. Homecoming is an episode where both the chessboard and stakes are set even higher. Wow, building of tension in a show's writing? Are we sure this takes place in 2024? After the chaos of the previous episode, we see Oz regrouping, not just physically, but mentally, as he makes moves to secure his dominance over Gotham. The episode opens with Oz destroying his plum chariot and kidnapping Taj Maroney, setting the stage for a brutal negotiation. Sophia Falcone, on the other hand, is playing the long game. Having orchestrated the downfall of her own family, she's eager to assert her dominance and gain control of her father's hidden assets. Meanwhile, Gotham's crooked cops, led by Chief Mackenzie Bach, played hilariously by Con O'Neill, offer a grim reminder of just how deep the corruption runs. Sophia, armed with the knowledge of where her father's untraceable fortune lies, seeks Johnny Vitti's cooperation, despite his bitter resentment towards her. As the episode progresses, Johnny Vitti reveals painful truths about the Falcone family, which adds layers of emotional tension to an otherwise cutthroat dynamic. In a grimly satisfying move, Sophia silences Vitti permanently, taking her place as the new head of the Falcone Gigante crime family. Meanwhile, Oz, relentless as ever, makes sure that nothing stands between him and his ambitions. After failing to kill Sal Maroney inside Blackgate, Oz sets Maroney's son and wife on fire. Yes, literally. In a move that only deepens the rivalry. The episode wraps up with Oz finding his new lair in an abandoned trolley station, a haunting metaphor for his childhood and his future as Gotham's godfather. The table is set for an inevitable clash between these two powerhouses, each determined to rule Gotham, whatever the cost. Now we have to talk performances. Kristen Meliotti and Colin Farrell bring their A-game, turning the Penguin from a standard crime drama into a thrilling character study. Miliati's Sophia is cold, calculating, and charismatic, seamlessly embodying the Mafia Queen on the rise. Sophia's strength lies in her ability to command authority without having to shout or flex her muscles, which is great character writing. Her understated yet icy determination contrasts sharply with Oswald Cobblepot's more outwardly chaotic style. There's really not even a hint of Mary Sue syndrome here, which makes me wonder, how would Miliati have been if she had acted on The Sopranos? Meanwhile, Farrell's portrayal of Cobblepot is as captivating as ever. He's still the unpredictable, volatile force we know from the previous episodes, but here, we see moments of vulnerability that remind us of his humanity, if you can even call it that. 
Oz is the kind of guy who will hug his mother one moment and set his enemies ablaze the next. And Farrell captures that balance with eerie precision. His performance, particularly in a scene with his mother, Francis Cobb, is a masterclass in tragic villainry. There's a brief moment where you almost feel bad for him. Almost. Then he goes ahead and lights a family on fire, and you remember that sympathy is for suckers. Together, Miliati and Farrell paint a picture of two people who couldn't be more different, yet are locked in the same ruthless game of ambition. While Sophia is the more measured tactician, Oz thrives on chaos and fear. It's this dynamic that makes Homecoming such a compelling episode. We're not just watching a crime saga, we're watching two master manipulators shape the future of Gotham in their own image. If the Penguin has taught us anything, it's that Gotham isn't big enough for two empires. Both Sophia and Oz are hell-bent on establishing their rule, and Homecoming showcases their different approaches to power. Sophia, having wiped out her own family, now seeks legitimacy and stability, using her father's fortune to win over the remaining Falcone loyalists. Her rise is all about strategy, manipulation, and playing the long game. She's methodical, and her ability to bend others to her will is what sets her apart in terms of TV villains. The fact that she can get Johnny Vitti, a man who despises her, to cooperate, if only temporarily, speaks volumes about her cunning personality. Oz, on the other hand, isn't concerned with diplomacy or subtlety. His is a reign of terror, and he's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Literally. He thrives on fear, using violence as his primary tool for control. In Homecoming, we see Oz stepping into the role of a full-fledged crime lord, rallying his dwindling crew and seeking out a new headquarters where he can rebuild his drug empire. In true Gotham fashion, this isn't just any hideout. It's a trolley station where he and his brothers used to play as kids. Talk about a twisted version of nostalgia. While Sophia is setting up her empire with calculated moves and cold precision, Oz is more like a bull in a china shop, leaving destruction in his wake, but always managing to land on his feet. It's a contrast that keeps us on edge knowing that their inevitable clash will be nothing short of catastrophic. At this point, it's hard not to draw comparisons between The Penguin and Game of Thrones. Both shows revolve around the idea of power, betrayal, and who's left standing when the smoke clears. In fact, if Gotham had its own Westeros, Sophia and Oz would be Lannisters, scheming, ruthless, and always ready for a double cross. And let's not forget the iconic Game of Thrones quote, why do you play the Game of Thrones? You either win or you die. Well, in Gotham, it seems the rules are the same, except here, you might also get set on fire. In Gotham, alliances are fragile, betrayal is inevitable, and everyone is playing a dangerous game. Sophia and Oz are aware of the stakes, and as they prepare for their final showdown, it's clear that there's only room for one ruler. The fun part is waiting to see who's left standing, because, let's be real, this is Gotham and nobody plays fair. Overall, Homecoming marks a turning point in The Penguin. After several episodes of setup, backstory, and character development, the show is finally pushing forward with its high-stakes drama. Oz and Sophia are preparing for war, and the slow burn of tension is finally paying off as their respective empires begin to take shape. Kristen Milioti and Colin Farrell continue to shine, delivering performances that elevate the series beyond its comic book roots. Miliati's cold precision and Farrell's chaotic unpredictability create a dynamic that keeps the audience hooked, waiting for the inevitable clash between these two powerhouses. As we head into the final three episodes, the stakes couldn't be higher. Oz is embracing his role as Gotham's most dangerous player, and Sophia is proving herself to be a force to be reckoned with. One thing is for sure though, this isn't your typical superhero show. The Penguin is a dark, gritty, and often brutally funny look at Gotham's criminal underworld. And if Homecoming is any indication, things are about to get a whole lot messier. Buckle up! Gotham's about to go up in flames and we're all just here to watch. But what do you guys think about all this? 
Who do you think will come out on top? And is there room for both Sophia and Oz at the top? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie. Yeah.